Hello, good afternoon. This is the video. It is uh, January 19, 2023, regarding the inspection in Sunset uh, Ridge. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the items that the inspector uh, found that might be deficient or could be deficient. So let's do it. All right. So this is the termite diagram. Uh, you've got a few conducive conditions, excessive moisture in the back uh, left and back right corners, um, high soil over by the um, water treatment equipment, um, high soil at the front three columns and heavy foliage at the uh, left front uh, of, the, okay. of the garage. Uh, okay. On the foundation... Oh, but no active termites. No active termites, no. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so um, we just have conducive conditions. On the uh, foundation, um, the foundation's an altimeter. I do my reference point at the front door. Uh, where I zero it out and move it all around the house. It goes uh, measures up or down in tenths of an inch. Um, there's no areas of concern. You've got um, uh, low areas here, negative uh, six tenths, and then it goes up to negative one, then up to two, and up to five. Those are within a span that's an acceptable range. So it's, a t it's within tolerance level. That's, it's exactly so right, right now, you would say that the foundation is performing as it should be performing. Um, I would say it's performing as it should be performing, but it is, it does have some settlement. And okay. That's evidenced with some small cracks in the brick, which are fairly normal. Um, also, doors not operating properly. You got a door swinging on its own. You got the back door is. Um, uh, rubbing the frame the utility room door I think might be damaged it's completely it's not square in the frame there's a big gap at the top and it hits the frame are we sure close. that that's with the foundation or you're not I'm not sure. positive that that one with okay. the utility room has anything to do with the foundation because okay. the the um, the strike plate is missing it looks like it was um, it looks like it was opened without turning the knob like it was right. busted open um, right, but basically what you're seeing from the measurements, the measurements are within tolerance. Yeah, and performing with settlement. Okay, okay. And that's fairly normal in Texas. Yes, yes. Almost all homes of this age will have some sign of Yeah, the, some settlement. sign of settlement, exactly. Okay, so that's normal. What's up? Um, so on the, um, the grading and drainage is also related to the foundation. Now, there's no gutters on the sides of the house or the back. So uh, you do have some soil erosion along the sides. Um, wherever the downward sloping roofs are, so that's right, left, and the back side. Right. Okay. Um, on the um, in the back right corner, you've got the low spot. You've got some standing water back there. Okay. And then over here on the left side, um, you also have kind of a low spot where there's some standing water. Okay. So those, I would recommend taking care of the grading by at, uh, taking care of the grading. Number one, get get rid of those low spots. And the grading is with the soil. That's and where then... the soil, and instead of sloping away, you've got it. It slopes. And then there's a low spot, and it goes back up, and that water can't get out. Right. So it's um, it's creating a, a puddle, standing water. Right. Standing water near the foundation is not good. That right. soil erosion is not good. I'd recommend right. gutters and uh, maybe some French drains or just changing the grading in, in a way that will uh, okay. get the water out. Sounds good. <clears throat> um, the roof covering looks pretty good. I took um, a number of photos up there. So you do have some granular loss. So you can see on the sh on the edge of the shingles and in the middle of the shingles, you, the granular material is just not there. Um, this is kind of a wide shot of that same area. It's, it happens in the middle. A lot of times it's along the edges. Um, I think the roof is about what about ten years old. Um, it's probably it's probably twelve years old. It's probably the same. Um, yeah, I mean the home was built in two thousand twelve. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's probably original. So probably yeah. eleven years. Yeah, years. Ten, yeah, 10 yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, the home I was built 12, in 2012, but... so we're in 2023. So we're going on eleven years. <laughs> but overall, it looks like it's okay for right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I did capture just in the gutters. Uh, that's all the granular material from the shingles. Um, so there's not any big mature trees to get leaves and pine needles, material. but this is all the granular material from the shingles. Mm -hmm. uh, a little split right here in the caulking at the hardy plank on that dormer. Um, and then I just noticed up in here, so um, and we'll talk about rodent activity when I get to the attic, but um, right here you've got this area that's 
They've got the screen and expanding foam. That's to keep animals from getting out. Sometimes that can be squirrels. But I did notice on the exterior they have those rat bait uh, stations. Right, right. And um, there are traps in the attic. So okay. we'll talk about that when I get there. Okay. So I just kind of took some general uh, photos. There, A lot of the roof is too steep to walk on. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got some granular loss on, down the middle of the ridge right here. This is the leftmost dormer. This is the one in the, this is the left dormer. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of in between. So right here you've got a shingle split. So at the center dormer and the rightmost dormer, you have this shingle. And that right could here. possibly allow water to get in. Uh, exactly. And so I'd recommend repairs to that with right. some roofing cement. Or if you have a roofer come, have them replace the got shingle. Got or the I have a good roofer for that. that, that can area. Take it. Right. And this is the other shingle. And they look basically okay. identical. And that's like at the, basically at the start of the dormer. Yeah, right there. The dormer ridge or I don't know. The, it's the that, exactly, yeah. Um, and then just looking down on this side. So the, these sides are really steep. Um, I didn't want to walk down the ridge here. I wouldn't want you to um, walk. <laughs> you can see how steep that is. But I did go down this valley and I was able Leave to Leave that for a professional roofer. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, nail heads are exposed in that one area. Those just need to be covered okay. with roofing cement. Um, the glowing edge, I took a picture of that so you could kind of see all fiberglass. these edges are glowing. That's the fiberglass base layer of the shingle. Okay. Uh, this is the furnace vent. Just need some paint at the flashing. You got some exposed nail head right there. Plumbing vent, exposed Basically, nail head. Basically, it just head. needs its routine maintenance after exactly. 10, 10, 11 years. It needs exactly. maintenance. Um, all, like the, all rules. All rules yeah. need. And I'd say all the plumbing vents need paint. Furnace vent needs paint. UV paint. Yeah. And this is kind of an all-purpose vent. You can see the flashing. The paint's worn off completely. Um, so there's really not anything else remarkable. Um, <laughs> I did want to show you the, um, so this is the, the pop nail. So on the left dormer and the center dormer, you've got the left corner where that nail has popped. That's got the flashing raised up. Um, you're going to have some uh, raised flashing because this is step flashing right here. Right. And that's normal. But this flashing sh right here should be flush with the roof covering. Yeah, it's totally those. sitting it, up. Yeah, and you could get some wind-driven rain up inside right. there. So that's why that's um, important to be flush. Um, so on the in the attic, you've got a good insulation thickness, about 12 to 14 inches of blown insulation. There's kind of a pathway uh, through the attic where there is some some low insulation here so they've it's compacted um, they've moved the insulation so they could find the rafters to step on as they walk through and um, you can see right there there's a rodent trap um, so in those areas um, you know you can do a couple things there you can redistribute but if you have people coming up they still need a place they're gonna have to move it uh, to to walk through the attic if you have any if you go up there if anybody else goes up there do any uh, work in the right. attic um, other than that um, the structure looks good insulation thickness looks good we'll just do a couple of these so this is the ridge and uh, the rafters all meet the ridge there's no separations That's in good. that area um, support structure you got your purlin supports along the sides. Those all look good. And then these things in the middle, those are ridge props. Those are um, attached at the top. And then um, I didn't point out over here. This is a, a rafter tie, and those are at regular intervals also throughout the attic. Here's kind of a picture of the, where the insulation looks good. That's where it's like 12 to 14 inches thick. So all in all, looks pretty good. Just have the rodent activity up there. Um, so did you actually see rodent activity, or you saw the traps? Well, I saw, and the my... I saw the traps, and I saw the outside bait stations. I don't see droppings. The fact that I see the bait stations and the traps means there's rodent activity of some sort. Might indicate towards rodent activity. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, might Do you get... think it might have been preventative maintenance? Um, Maybe. Possibly. Right. So I, I don't I... think there's a way to really tell if there was for sure, for sure. And I can speak to the sellers about that, but, um, but you know, some people just do it because, you know, you have companies that come out and say, hey, we'll, we'll make your house, you know, um, vermin free. Well, okay, so that's true. But with that screening on the, up inside the, uh, up in the eave on the roof. Right, right, I saw and it. And that flashing at the bottom of the garage door frame, mm -hmm. that's to keep things from getting in. So... Something has gotten in at some point, and yeah, they might have they might have those things set 
to prevent that from happening again, again. but at some point okay. something did. Okay. Otherwise, okay. it wouldn't have those things there. Okay. And, and that's my opinion. I'm not an exterminator. Right. We talk to pest control people. You could be right because sometimes be the varmint. Right I think sometimes that. what they'll do is they'll expand the hole to make it easier. Right. Um, oh, the, the, animal, the animals. Yeah. yeah, will expand the hole yeah. and make it larger yeah. to make it easier access. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bring all their friends. <laughs> exactly. Um, so um, I did thermal imaging um, on the on the where the floor where the wall meets the floor and where the ceiling meets the wall. Um, all over the house. Um, I took a number of images. I'll have to drop those images into the sections for walls and ceilings. Um, but um, no major issues, or no no issues whatsoever. Um, I want to show you with the ceiling um, at the watermark. So I did. Uh, so this is the area that was away from the um, watermark to establish a baseline. Twelve point five percent humidity in the drywall. And then putting it directly on top, 10.9%. So there's, there's no active moisture. In okay, that and that was that little area right there, yeah, right? Yeah. And he's talking about this area here, just to bring this into perspective. They're talking about this right here. So there was no active, I guess, precipitation in the sheet rock. Yeah, correct. Um, I mean, not to a point where you would be concerned. It's dry, pretty much. Yeah, it's dry. It's dry. It'd be nice to know... What happened there? Right, yeah. and and that's another you know question, and it might actually be in the seller's disclosure. I need to re-review it. Okay, shame on me for not knowing. <laughs> um, on the uh, right side, uh, center bedroom inside the closet, there's some damage to the ceiling. Looks like somebody up in the attic maybe just stepped through the drywall, cracked the ceiling. Okay, that was in the. Um, that's in that pink bedroom closet. Okay. Pink bedroom closet. All right. I know that there was a few things that the sellers explained to the buyer. Um, I would need to revisit with her to get a clear understanding. But I think it was something with the step through that you're talking about. Oh, okay. But, um, but I'll revisit with her to confirm um, it. A few garage floor cracks. So this is just outside the garage door. And then inside the Hairline garage. Hairline cracks. Yeah, hairline, just kind of drying cracks, but right. just want to know that they're there, monitor that, make sure. Right. Um, but pretty normal for a slab. Yeah. All right. I see them all the time. So Just want to point it out because you want to monitor. It was yeah. want to monitor. Yeah, they sure start getting to the point bigger. where you can stick your pinky in them, and, yeah, and exactly. that's a problem. <laughs> all right, so on doors. So the uh, back door had a gap in the weather seal and damaged weather stripping. Okay. Um, the... Uh, back door also rubs the frame at the top left corner. Okay, and that goes back to what you're saying. It, it may or may not be foundation um, issue. Probably rubbing the frame is probably settlement. That's pretty. It's pretty settlement. typical. Settlement. Okay. Um, and you could adjust usually at the hinges, the door yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So I've seen them do it. Uh, well, I don't know how to do it, but yes, no, I know, it no, can no, be done. Right, right. I've seen them do not it. Not by me. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Um, the um, the right center bedroom door swings closed on its own. Uh, the utility room doors are not square. Are no, no, you frame. sure it didn't have a spring in there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's another indicator of settlement. But the door not being square in the frame, I think the door is damaged at the utility room. Okay. Um, missing door stops throughout the house in various locations. Okay. Um, master bathroom right door is missing the handle. Um, the shared bathroom door uh, doesn't latch. Um, another, I saw that. Another indicator of settlement. Um, the interior door ball catch doesn't engage at the right master bathroom door. The left master bathroom door and both pantry doors have damaged ball catch. Okay. Um, and those just need to be uh, repaired or replaced. And the utility room strike plate is missing. Um, the back door, it could just be dirty. I said worn finish, uh, but there's mud and there may be some scratches on there that you can't see because of the dirt. Uh, because there's dog scratches on the door. Well, yeah, they do have a dog. Yeah. So, um, and then um, at the right center uh, bedroom closet, um, it's got sliding door, but one of the doors is missing, so it's only one door. It's only one, one door. side got or the it. other. Yep. Um, on the windows, the um, the windows were dirty on the outside. 
And I pointed that out because a lot of times with double pane windows, you can't tell if the if you have a broken seal. And the the the, the water droplet stains might be in between the glass yeah. and the envelope of yeah. the glass panes exactly. on the exterior, so but it's kind of hard. What to it do. looks like now is that it, you, you have got some mildew on those windows because there's no gutters on the sides. They come down, it splashes mm -hmm. off the window sill, gets onto the screen or the window, and just has some mildew. Um, mm -hmm. All the windows that I could open um, operated properly. Actually, mm -hmm. I have a deficiency on there, and there's no deficiency. Um so there was no deficiencies. On no windows. deficiencies. All okay. the windows open. The only windows that were obstructed were these at the couch. Okay, that's um, all. The rest great. of them I open and close. They all lock smoothly. Um, caulking on the exterior looks pretty good. All right, uh, that's pretty good. Um, let's see. On um, you got one little crack at the curb. It's um, right as you come off the driveway. I wanted to point that out because at right. some point that's going to get separated. It's going to get yeah. It's going to separate yeah. and get bigger. And then um, in the back uh, near the sink, uh, the back shared bathroom sink cabinet. Come on, let's go. Uh, the hinges are loose on that door. Okay, got it. All right. Um, on electrical, the electrical panel um, looks good. It's 100 amp uh, aluminum. Uh, everything was working like it was supposed to. Um, I've got a number of photos, but there's the sort of the money shot. Let's go. Um, everything looks good there. Circuit okay. breaker size, wires. Um, there's a lot of dead geckos in there. Mm. You get in, can't get back out. Um, and then on branch circuits, um, everything worked. Um, all your GFCI protected outlets are working properly. Okay. Um, exterior reset in the garage. Uh, there's a freezer in the garage, so normally I wouldn't have messed with that, but I had already tripped it uh, by tripping the exterior, so I went mm -hmm. and tested it, and it worked fine. Um, all the kitchen worked fine. All the bathroom worked fine. Um, so GFCI protection looks good. Um, missing globe at the back porch. Oh, and smoke detector. So the smoke detector... Missing globe at the back porch. Yeah, the Are you talking about the porch, light? Just, yeah, the light bulb is just bare instead of having a globe Okay, got it, it, got it. I just want to make sure I got that right. Yeah. It's, the, it's the little protection globe that Correct. goes over the light bulb and protects the the, the actual the, the girl portion. and Yeah, exactly. The circuit uh, and all that. A uh, smoke detector in the master bedroom is defective. <clears throat> uh, uh, and then the smoke detector in the right front bedroom... Um, it works, but it's not interconnected with the other smoke detectors. Okay. So it's all, like you press it, you test it, and it should set off all the all of them. It's yeah. almost like it's not plugged in. Exactly. Got it. Um, the other smoke detectors, uh, all the other working smoke detectors are interconnected like they're supposed to be. Sounds great. Um, heating yeah. worked like it was supposed to. You know, sometimes to. when people put batteries in them, they fail to plug them back in. Where it might make the smoke detector itself work, but it's just not interconnected, like you said. Maybe. Uh, That's, or sometimes when they're disconnecting it and taking it out, they pull it too hard, and it and the wire just dis, the wire just breaks. Yeah. Or comes out of it, and they just don't put it back in. That's and possible. So it, it, I, I, trust me, I've changed a lot of smoke <laughs> detectors, and you see it all. <laughs> um, with the uh, furnace, everything looks good with the furnace. So here's a picture of it up in the attic. Yeah, we had an HVAC technician, and he said that he felt that the furnace was fine. Yeah, everything's working fine. I looked for a minimum of 100 degrees at the register, and um, and I had that at all okay. registers. Uh, when I tested the cooling equipment, um, now it's a difficult, it, it's, it's above 60 degrees, which means it's safe for the equipment. However, it's difficult to get an accurate reading when it's so cool outside. Right. However, with that being said, um, the, the AC cooled. Um, I took the temperature at the return. It was 60. Let me look. I don't want to say the wrong was thing. It, was it a, close to 20 that. degree drop? No, not really. It was 63 degrees at the return. And then all the supplies were 50 to 52. That's really cool, but it's only a temperature differential Eight. of 11 to 13 degrees. Oh, okay. So it's cooling, just not as efficiently as it should. In my mind, it should be closer to 18 yeah, it should be between 15 and 20 for sure. Right. And especially with it being as cool as it is. Um, it should make it easier to cool. Yeah. I mean, definitely the the HVAC technician alluded to that there is no pressure 
with the Freon levels for the upstairs evaporator coil, okay. which leads us to believe that there's a leak at the coil. Okay. Well, that and would usually make... if there's a leak at the coil, it probably needs to be replaced. And how many times have you had issues with the evaporator coil? Yeah. Hmm. Um, on the duct work, um, the ducts were fine. They're suspended from the uh, from the rafters. They're not running along the floor. They're not laying on top of each other. Uh, the media filter is in place up there, but the media filter is dirty. Okay. Um, media filter needs to be changed out. Oh, I'm glad that you got. The, okay, so it, is that 25 by what? Um, I have a better picture. Oh, good. Under uh, that's just showing the that. Dirt. That way, we can at least get the. Media filter, here you go. Okay, yeah, so bottom line is we know the media filter is 20 by 25 by 4. And yes, definitely, yeah. I agree, needs to be replaced. And that might be part of the reason why the evaporator coil has been that, sucking too hard. Yeah, and that's a good point. causes other problems with friction over years. <laughs> um, let's see, plumbing. Um, 70 PSI. As uh, your water pressure, it looks like copper piping, uh, water was, uh, the plumbing was performing. Uh, the, there's a few issues that are, that fall under the plumbing category, but they're not necessarily plumbing. Um, so like caulking is missing at the base of the toilet in the okay. master bathroom. The caulking is deteriorated at the master bathtub and at the master shower. Um, the, mat, the shower head in the um, hall bathroom over here uh, leaks where the where the water supply plugs into the shower yeah, head. Fairly common. Um, so pretty um, just yeah. pretty easy stuff. On drains, there were no leaks um, in any of the drains. Okay. Um, That's good. So no issues there. On um, the water heater um, is a 2012. So we do want to report. You know, we, we say it's um, older, but working as intended. If it's 10 to 12 years old, we just start saying, you know, you want, might want to start budgeting for right. a new one. It's working like it's supposed to. Pref prepare for deferred maintenance or pro possible yeah, replacement. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, usually I always say, and it's in the attic, correct? Yeah, correct. yeah, it is in the attic. I usually always say when you have one in the attic, if you can get 15 to, to 20 years out of it, you know, you may want it because the last thing you want is for it to start leaking somehow. Yeah. And now it's going through the sheetrock and everything else. Yeah. And now you got a bigger problem. Yeah, that's definitely not what you want. Um, no. Was um, it? Did it, it did have a drain pan? It was sitting in. The it drain. had a drain pan. Okay, good. Uh, it's a drain pan and the temperature pressure release are pumped to the right side of the house. Okay, good to know. Um, the dishwasher worked like it was supposed to. The food disposer does not work at all. Okay. Uh, the range hood exhaust work like it's supposed to. Both the. Um, the so the light. disposal is not working. Correct. It's got to be one of these switches because there's no switches underneath right. the sink here. And usually you get the you get the switch underneath the sink when it's an island. So it should be yeah, probably it should be one of these. One of, the one of these is the dishwasher. Yeah. Yeah, the dishwasher worked. One of those is the dishwasher. Yeah. One's the you mind if I? I'm just going to keep them in the off position. Fine, yeah. yeah. I don't um, want to burn down the house. No. <laughs> Let's see, the oven, um, the oven did work. So what I had done originally, I'm just, I'm looking at the burners and I'm looking at the knobs and I'm thinking this controls the oven, but actually this is the on for the oven. So I figured that oh, out okay. kind of a little bit late, but you can see how dirty the oven is. There's grease and food. Um, I had a situation before where it created a lot of smoke in the house right. and I didn't want to do that. It's best to keep it clean. It's best to keep it yeah. yeah. But now, oh, let me quick question yeah. while we're talking about it. I, you know, I don't know, but since it's KF90 and I think it should be, plum oh, it is plumbed out. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I hate when they're not plumbed out because that's just not a, a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And they also say when you cook, believe it or not, did you hear the new reports about gas, about the butane that they put in there? They say, that. you know, when you actually cook, you want to make sure it's drawn yeah. on the outside because it's not good to breathe in that carbon dioxide, I guess, or whatever. Well, it's not good to breathe in... Um Carbon monoxide, monoxide. which you're well, that's carbon what dioxide all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's good when it's plumbed out, though. It's yeah. good when it's plumbed out. Um, so the uh, the microwave oven worked. Oh, the cooktop itself. All the burners worked. No issues there. Microwave uh -huh. worked. Um, the exhaust vents in the bathrooms all worked. Um, the garage door opener worked. Um, all safety features worked properly. Oh, Everything good. looked good. Um, the dryer exhaust um, needs to be cleaned. So that is... Uh, 
That is directed up to the roof. This is at the right side in the front. You can oh, see yeah, lint yeah, hanging out of the vent. And that is like a number one cause for fire. Yeah, so that definitely <laughs> needs to be cleaned, yeah. I would say, before use. Yeah, they got to attach them. I think one of the best ways they clean it out is when they put one of those uh, leaf blowers on it. That uh, They have another thing that it's like a, it's like a weed eater, but the, the, the nylon strands are thinner so it doesn't damage your duct. And they just like whip around. Mm. And you can send that thing through and it cleans all the lint. And you like send it up and pull it down and all the lint falls down. Sounds it's pretty wrong. good. Okay. So on the sprinkler, um, so I took some photos of equipment. So this is the backflow preventer right here. And everything looks good here. It looks like this kind of insulation is wrapped around. Um, I don't know if I took another picture of it. This is a rain sensor. It's right uh, above that. Mm-hmm. Um, this is these are the sprinkler control wires. They have those uh, insulated. Um, those are they thought it was plumbing probably. It's, they're electronics. Um, it doesn't need to be insulated. And then this is the control box. It was in the off position um, when I got here. What is this? Oh, I took a picture. This is a sprinkler um, and hose. And so that's why I'm thinking they probably knew that it wasn't working properly. So. Um, after messing around with the uh, backflow preventer, I discovered that this thing is broken off the top. And then I turn this screw and, and water comes out. So it definitely has a supply of water coming to it, but it's not sending water out to the sprinklers. Yeah, you, uh, <clears throat> you can see that the, um, the control valves are, um, I think they say that that's um, perpendicular. Well, if, per they're, if they're uh, in line with the pipe, they're, they're open. on. They're open, yeah. right. Yeah. Now there is another valve. Well, there, sometimes there's another valve where you can turn the water supply off, and then you can um, open up. Right, they're parallel with the, with the line. Yeah. And but sometimes you can turn yeah. off that other valve. And, I think it's this valve. It's, but I think it's this valve right here, at the top. If that valve was perpendicular with the pipe, then it would stop spraying. I yeah. would think because I think that's I think this is the supply line. I believe. <clears throat> so there would be a separate valve other than the backflow preventer where water may turn on and off. Okay. However, since water comes out of this, it's got to be on. Otherwise, if the water, if that if other valve were turned, turned off, off water would, would not come out. Or it would come out and die down. Exactly. Right. And that it comes out at high pressure. Um, so, so it's fully on, but it's just the system just not, is off, and, it just, and it's not and it's not properly. clicking on the work. Exactly. Okay. Um, and so that is it. I was going to take some. Oh, and I just said sprinkler system inoperable. I was going to take some zone photos when the I operated the zones, but but they none didn't of the come on. Work, so only and it might be something where the computer is not somehow communicating with yeah it might be something with well, electronics yeah exactly. with electronics so it could be a, a multitude of different things i mean the good thing is is it's already installed so a lot of times a a good yeah, lawn sprinkler company repair, might yeah. be able to figure that out very quickly yeah so so that concludes everything that concludes okay okay well hey i i appreciate everything yeah you bet good report very thorough and um and this will conclude the video for the property in sunset ridge thank you